Good morning and welcome to the Morning Outlook. I'm James Preston reporting live from Kalkine TV's Sydney studios. The Australian share market is poised to end the week marginally higher, taking cues from a strong tech-led rally in the US, while weak commodity prices may hurt gains in local mining and energy firms. Oil prices fell following a sudden rise in US crude inventories and surging cases of COVID-19. Yesterday, the best performing sector was financials, up by 0.2 per cent, whilst the worst performing sector was energy, down by 1.9 per cent. In terms of individual performers, the best performing stock in the S&P ASX 200 was Reliance Worldwide, closing 5.2 per cent higher at $5.72, followed by shares in Boral and Reese. On the downside, the worst performing stock in the S&P ASX 200 was PointsBet's holding, closing 18.3% lower at $8.63 a share, followed by shares in IOOF Holdings and Nickel Mines. According to the latest SPI futures, the ASX 200 is expected to open the day four points lower. Yesterday, the ASX dipped by 0.3% to 7,430, its first decline since Tuesday last week. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones was up by 0.68%, the S&P 500 was up by 0.98% and the Nasdaq enjoyed a strong day finishing 1.39% higher. Let's now take a look at some local news from this morning. Casino operator Crown Resorts settled a $125 million Aussie class action suit in the federal court without the admission of liability. The settlement is in relation to its business dealings in China that led to 19 staff being arrested there in 2016 for illegally promoting gambling. Legal outfit Morris Blackburn has now also launched a lawsuit against Crown to help investors recoup losses after the news saw Crown's shares plummet by 14%. Crown expects to recover a significant portion of the settlement amount from its insurers. In further news, Macquarie Bank has raised its first half of 2022 financial year net profit by 107% and flagged plans to raise 1.5 billion Aussie dollars from institutional investors. Macquarie said net profit for the six months through September rose to $2.04 billion from $985 million a year earlier. It said earnings were in line with the one, sorry, should I say $2.03 billion net profit for the half of year through to March. And in more banking news, NAB will continue with its search for a new independent non-executive chair ahead of the bank's AGM after James Spenceley withdrew his candidacy. Mr Spenceley, who has other governance commitments, was in discussion with proxy advisers and investors before ultimately deciding not to proceed with the potential appointment, stating, I do not want to disrupt NAB, its shareholders or any company that I am involved with. Time now for a very quick break on the Morning Outlook before we turn our attention overseas. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back to the Morning Outlook report. The European Central Bank is set to meet on Thursday this week. The US Federal Reserve and Bank of England will also meet on November 4. London's FTSE 100 fell on Thursday, led by oil major Royal Dutch Shell, after it missed quarterly profit estimates, although forecast beating earnings from Lloyds Banking Group and ad firm WPP checked overall declines. Oil prices fell following a sudden rise in US crude inventories and surging cases of COVID-19. Brent crude was down by 0.7% to trade at $84.02 a barrel. WTI also experienced a 0.2% dip to trade at $82.54 US cents a barrel. As for the world's favourite safe haven, gold prices were lifted by a softer dollar and data showing that the US economy grew at its slowest pace in more than a year. 
Spot gold rose 0.11% to US $1,798.64 an ounce. And US gold futures settled up by 0.2% at US $1,802.60. And just as we wrap up the morning outlook, we'll have a special report a little later today, but Facebook has officially unveiled its name change to Meta, with Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg stating that the change is reflective of the company's pursuit of a metaverse that incorporates virtual and augmented reality and a push into Web 3.0. Well, that's all for our Morning Outlook report here on Kalkine TV. Have a great day trading and stay tuned for more market updates and economic news live throughout the day. I'm James Preston, signing off for now.